you. Good morning. Uh, we're going to get started. Uh, we're going to start uh, with me uh, reading a couple of paragraphs with respect to our current status um, in the state authorized uh, emergency status. So I understand that state law currently requires that the following announcement be made at the beginning of every remote council session. Due to the current public health emergency, city council is currently meeting remotely. We are using Microsoft Teams to make this remote meeting possible. Instructions for how the public may view the meeting and offer public comment are included in the stated meeting notice that was published in the Daily News and Choir, Legal Intelligencer prior to the meeting and can be also found on phlcouncil.com. I now note that the hour has come. The clerk will please call the roll to take attendance and members that are in attendance, please indicate by saying I or present when your name is called. Mr. Decker. Councilwoman Bass. Present, good morning. Good morning. Councilwoman Brooks. Good morning, I'm present. Good morning. Councilman Dom. Good morning, Council President and colleagues. Good morning. Councilwoman Gautier. Good morning, everyone present. Good morning. Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson. Good morning, present. Good morning. Councilman Green. Good morning, Council President. Good morning, colleague, colleagues, Mr. Decker, and the public. Good morning. Kim. Good morning, Council President. Good morning, colleagues. I'm present. Councilman Heenan. Good morning, Council President. Good morning, colleagues and Council President. I want to thank you for your leadership during these unprecedented times. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Johnson. Good morning, Council President. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, sir. Councilman Jones. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, viewing public. Good morning. Councilman O. Present. Good morning, Council President and colleagues. Good morning. Councilman O'Neill. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Councilwoman Parker. Good morning, Mr. President and colleagues present. Good morning. Councilwoman Kinnone Sanchez. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Councilman Squilla. Good morning, everyone present. Good morning. Councilman Thomas. Good morning, Council President. Good morning, colleagues. And just special thank you to the tech staff for the late night last night and making it happen and again today. Thank you. I appreciate you all. Good morning. Council President Clark. And good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you all. And again, thank you for your hard work, uh, particularly through last night, both members, staff, and support. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate you all. Um, so we've established a quorum, so council will now come to order. Uh, despite the great need, there will be no invocation today. Uh, we will, however, observe a very brief moment of silent prayer for our city, its leaders, and the citizens during the current public health crisis. Uh, we will ask you now to observe a brief moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next order of business is the approval of the journal of the meeting of Thursday, June 11, 2020, and the chair recognizes Councilman Squillow. Councilman Squillow. Uh, here. Jones. Councilman Jones, can you? Councilman, you, can you? I'm you, Councilman. I move the uh, minutes be approved. Second. Thank you. 
It's been moved and probably second at the journal of the meeting of Thursday, June 11, 2020. Stand approved. All in favor will indicate by saying aye. 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 have it and the journal is approved. Uh, and our next order of business is request for leave of absence. And the chair recognizes Councilwoman Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. There are no requests for leaves of absence on behalf of members of council. Chair, thanks to Councilwoman. And our next order of business is communications. And the clerk will please read the messages from the mayor and any other communications that he may have in his possession. To the president, the members of the council of the city of Philadelphia, by your request that my administration note all business before council that should be considered related to our response to the pandemic or otherwise necessary to allow for expedited action, I respectfully, respectfully request and submit for the consideration of your honorable body a resolution ratifying the mayor's declaration of emergency related to the COVID-19 health emergency. Thank you, Mr. Decker. No additional communications? No, I have none, Mr. President. Thank you very much. And our next order of business is the introduction of bills and resolutions. And Mr. Decker, if you will please read the titles of the legislation that is being offered today by the member. Councilman Heenan offers one bill entitled an ordinance amending chapter 22800 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Purchase of Credited Service of Title 22 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Public Employees Retirement Code to allow certain employees to purchase credited service for prior military service without payment of certain interest for a certain time period. Very committee. Councilman Jones offers on behalf of Council President Clark a, res a non privileged resolution ratifying the mayor's declaration of emergency related to the COVID-19 health emergency. Next week's calendar. Councilman Green offers a non-privileged resolution calling upon the Congress to allocate fair and direct federal support to all of America's communities, regardless of population size. Councilman Green also offers a non-privileged resolution calling upon the Congress to enact and fund a national sustainable water affordability plan, similar to the low income home energy assistance program, LIHEAP. And next week's calendar. Councilwoman Bass offers one bill entitled an ordinance amending chapter 9, 800 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Landlord and Tenant, requiring landlords to give tenants notice of alternative ways to meet tenant obligations to make security dep deposits, and by providing for certain landlord and tenant responsibilities related to the payment of rent and security deposits. For the committee. Councilman Earl offers one bill entitled an ordinance amending chapter 17504 of the Philadelphia Code entitled goals for the participation of disadvantaged owned business enterprises in city contracts by adding a new requirement that city council be notified of certain changes to existing city contracts valued over $1 million to ensure expansions adhere to participation goals and standards. For the committee. There are no other bills or resolutions being offered by the members today, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Our next order of business is reports from the committees, and the chair now recognizes Councilwoman Parker for a report from the Committee of the Whole. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee of the Whole reports out seven bills and one resolution with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, will you please read the report? To the President and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, the Committee of the Whole, to which was referred Bill Number 200285, entitled an ordinance to adopt the capital program for the six fiscal years 2021 through 2026 inclusive. And Bill Number 200286, entitled an ordinance to adopt the fiscal 2021 capital budget. And Bill Number 200287, entitled an ordinance adapting the operating budget for fiscal year 2021. And Bill Number 200288, entitled an ordinance amending Chapter 19, 1200 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Parking Tax by revising certain tax rates. And Bill Number 200290, entitled an ordinance amending Chapter 19, 2600 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Business Income and Receipts Taxes by revising certain tax rates. And Bill Number 200291, entitled an ordinance amending Chapter 19, 1500 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Wage and Net Profits Tax by revising certain tax rates. 
And bill number 200292 entitled an ordinance amending chapter 191300 of the Philadelphia Code entitled real estate taxes to eliminate the discount for early payments of real estate taxes. And resolution number 200331 entitled the resolution approving the director of finances budget stabilization reserve fund withdrawal certification for purposes of, law, of allowing utilization of $34,276,000 in the reserve fund for general fund purposes in connection with the FY 2021 operating budget. Respectfully reports it is considered the same and returns, and returns the attached bills and resolution to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Decker. The chair again recognizes Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill numbers 200285, 200286, 200287, 200288, 200290, 200291, and 200292. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and properly seconded that the rules of council be suspended. So that's remit first reading this day of bills number 200285, 200286, 200287, 200288, 200290, 200291, and 200292. All those in favor will say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it, and these bills will be placed on our first reading calendar for today. Our resolution number 200331 will be placed on the final passes calendar at our next session of council. Chair now recognizes Councilman Johnson for a report from the Committee on the Rules. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Rules reports out four bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, will you please read the report? The Committee on Rules, to which is referred Bill Number 200183, entitled an ordinance approving the Ninth Amendment of the Redevelopment Proposal for the Point Breeze Urban Renewal Area, being the area generally bounded by Washington Avenue, South 25th Street, Reed Street, the rear property lines of the 1400 and 1500 blocks of South Taylor Street, Casper Street, South 25th Street, Moore Street, and South Broad Street, including the Ninth Amendment to the Urban Renewal Plan, which provides the earlier for changes that would make it consistent with the Point Breeze Redevelopment Area Plan and generally consistent with the most recent comprehensive plan approved by the City Planning Commission of the City of Philadelphia. And Bill Number 200346 entitled an ordinance to amend the Philadelphia zoning maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by 56th Street, Arch Street, Conestoga Street, and Market Street. And Bill Number 200349 entitled an ordinance amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Zoning and Planning to amend certain provisions of Chapter 14500 entitled Overlay Zoning Districts by creating the AME American Street Overlay District and Bill Number 200350 entitled an ordinance amending the Philadelphia Zoning Maps by changing the zoning designations of certain areas of land located within an area bounded by Norris Street, American Street, Burke Street, and Third Street and amending Title 14 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Zoning and Planning to amend certain provisions of Chapter 14500 and titled Overlay Zoning Districts by creating the BNA, Burks and American Overlay District. Respectfully reports it as considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Decker. The chair again recognizes Councilman Johnson. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 200183, 200346, 200349 and 200350. Second. Thank you. There's been moved and probably second that the rules of council be suspended. So I have to bring it first reading this day of bills number 200183, 200346, 200349, and 200350. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. That's headed. And these bills will be placed on our first reading calendar today. Chair now recognizes Councilman Green for a report from the Committee on Finance. Thank you, Council President. The Committee on Finance reports out one bill with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, can you please read the report? The Committee on Finance, to which is referred Bill Number 200347, entitled an ordinance amending Chapter 19-3200 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Keystone Opportunity Zone, Economic Development District, and Strategic Development Area, to provide for additional extensions of certain benefits for the purpose of facilitating economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Respectfully reports it as considered the same and returns the attached bill to council with a favorable, re favorable recommendation. Thank you. The chair again recognizes Councilman Green. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rule of the council be suspended so as to permit first reading of this day of bill number 200347. Second. Thank you. It has moved and properly second that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill number 200347. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And this bill will be placed in our first reading calendar today. The chair now recognizes Councilwoman Parker. For a report from the Committee on Law and Government. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Law and Government reports out seven bills and three resolutions with the favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read the report. The Committee on Law and Government, to which is referred bill number 200076 entitled, an ordinance providing for the submission of the qualified electors of the city of Philadelphia of an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Rule Charter calling on the police department to eliminate the practice of unconstitutional stop and frisk as approved by resolution of the city council. And bill number 200208, entitled an ordinance providing for the submission of the qualified electors of the city of Philadelphia of an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Road Charter, providing for the creation of the office of the victim advocate as approved by resolution of the city council. And bill number 200328, entitled an ordinance amending the Philadelphia Code to add a new chapter entitled Employee Protections in Connection with COVID-19 Emergency Health Order to provide workplace protections in emergency health orders and regulations, provide prevent protections for employees against retaliatory actions, both for the disclosure of information related to employer non-compliance with such orders and for refusal to work under unsafe conditions caused by non-compliance with such orders. And bill number 200355, entitled an ordinance amending and ordinance, bill number 180293, entitled an ordinance authorizing the revision of lines and grades in a portion of city plan numbers 34S and 41S, by striking from the city plan and vacating the legally open portions of Packer Avenue from Christopher Columbus Boulevard to the pier headline of the Delaware River, and reserving and placing on the city plan a right of way for sewer and drainage purposes. And bill number 200363, entitled an ordinance amending section 20101 of the Philadelphia Code entitled residence requirements by restoring the requirement that no person shall be appointed as an employee in the civil service, including but not limited to police officers, unless he or she has been a bona fide resident of the city for at least one year prior to appointment. And bill number 200367, entitled an ordinance providing for the submission to the qualified electors of the city of Philadelphia of the, of the proposal set forth in a resolution approved by council proposing an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Rule Charter relating to the creation of the Citizens Police Oversight Commission. And bill number 200370, entitled an ordinance authorizing the Procurement Commissioner on behalf of the city to enter into a concession agreement with Bicycle Transit Systems Incorporated for the operation, maintenance, and expansion of a bicycle sharing system and essential service during the COVID-19 period. And resolution Number 200080, entitled the resolution proposing an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Rule Charter, calling on the police department to eliminate the practice of unconstitutional stop and frisk. And resolution number 200216, entitled the resolution proposing an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Rule Charter, providing for the creation of the office of the victim advocate. And resolution number 200377, entitled the resolution proposing an amendment to the Philadelphia Home Rule Charter, to provide for the creation of a citizens police oversight commission, and, and to authorize city council by ordinance to determine the composition, powers, and duties of the commission, and providing for the submission of the amendment to the electors of Philadelphia. Respectfully reports it as considered the same and returns the attached bills and resolution to council and resolutions to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Becker. The chair again recognizes council member Park. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill numbers 200076, 200208, 200328, 200355, 200363, 200367, and 200370. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and probably second that the rules of council be suspended. So as to permit first reading this day of bills number 200076, 200208, 200328, 200355, 200363, 200367, and 200370. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, aye. aye. And these bills will be placed on our first reading calendar for today. Uh, resolutions number 200080, 
200216 and 200377 will be placed on the final passes calendar at our next session of council. Chair now recognizes Councilman Thomas for a report from the Committee of Streets and Services. Thank you, Council President. The Committee on Streets and Services reports out two bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Councilman. Mr. Decker, please read the report. The Committee on Streets and Services, to which is referred bill number 200351, entitled an ordinance authorizing the operation of sidewalk cafes during the COVID-19 emergency until December 31, 2020, in areas of the city where such activity currently must be otherwise authorized by special ordinance and allowing expanded activity by currently licensed sidewalk cafe operations. And bill number 200352, entitled an ordinance amending chapter 11100 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled general provisions, to authorize the streets department to permit closure of the public right of way, including on street parking spaces for public health, welfare and safety purposes during the COVID-19 public health emergency until December 31, 2020, including expansion of business uses that cannot operate in indoor environment or have limited indoor capacity and or service due to the COVID-19 emergency. Respectfully reports it has considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Chair, he recognizes Councilman Thomas. Thank you, Council President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 200351 and 200352. Second. Thank you, it has been moved and properly second that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 200351, 200352. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 And these bills will be placed in our first meeting calendar today. Chair now recognizes Councilman Squilla for a report from the Committee on Commerce and Economic Development. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Commerce and Economic Development reports out two bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read that report. The Committee on Commerce and Economic Development, to which is referred bill number 200293 entitled, an ordinance amending chapter 17, 1400 of the Philadelphia Code and sell of non-competitively bid contracts, financial assistance, by making revisions, including but not limited to, the exception for emergency contracting. And bill number 200344, entitled an ordinance amending title nine of the Philadelphia Code to create a new chapter, 95,000, entitled food delivery services. To regulate third party food delivery services, require certain disclosures to consumers, and provide for a limitation on certain fees charged to consumers. Respectful reports it has considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Sierra again recognizes Councilman Spiller. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit the first reading this bill of this day of this bill numbers 200293 and 200344. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and probably second that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 200293 and number 200344. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. And these bills will be placed on our first reading calendar today. Chair now recognizes Councilwoman Bass for a report from the Committee of Public Health and Human Services. Thank you, Mr. President. The committee reports one bill uh, from the Committee on Public Health and Human Services with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read that report. The Committee on Public Health and Human Services, to which is referred bill number 200306, entitled An Ordinance Amending Chapter 94100 of the Philippi Code, entitled Promoting Healthy Families and Workplaces by Adding New Definitions and Requirements to ensure that certain health care employees are compensated for lost wages and medical expenses in the event they contract a communicable disease, disease at work during a pandemic or epidemic event. Respectful reports it has considered and amended the same and returns the attached bill to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Chair again recognizes Councilwoman Bay. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of bill number 200306 today. Second. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and probably second that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bill number 200306. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. 
I have it, and this bill will be placed on our first reading calendar today. Uh, that concludes our reports from committee and our next order of business is consideration of the calendar. I note that the bill just reported from committee was the suspension of the rule have been deemed to have had a first reading. Those bills will be placed on our second reading and final passes calendar at our next session of council. Uh, there are no additional bills on our first reading calendar today. So today we only are considering those legislative matters on the second reading and final passes calendar that directly pertain to the COVID-19 crisis or that require expedited action to continue essential government function. Uh, there are several matters on the calendar that meet these criteria. Uh, the prime sponsors of those matters have communicated with their desire to have them considered today. I therefore recognize Councilwoman Parker for the purpose of calling up those matters for the second reading and final passes calendar. Thank you, Mr. President. The following resolutions and bills are being called up from the second reading and final passage calendars today. They are numbers 200296, 200297, 200298, 200299, 200300, 200329, 200330, 200294, 200295, 200302, 200304, and 200305. All other resolutions and bills are being held. Thank you, Councilwoman. So before considering these resolutions and bills, uh, we will consider public comment and we'll go as follows. Under normal circumstances, public comment must concern matters of the second reading and final passes calendars for possible, possible action at a session of council. A speaker on any of those matters must sign up in order to testify. You must call 215-686-3406 by 5 p.m. the day before the session to sign up for public comment. When you call, we will take your name and phone number and the number of the legislative item you are commenting on and whether you are in support or against uh, the legislation to add to the list. Um, at the appropriate time, we will telephone each person on the list during the council session and invite them to our remote meeting. Uh, under ideal circumstances, um, you would normally have three minutes, but given the existing situation, uh, we are going to impose a two minute time limit. We have a significant number of individuals testifying today. So I ask you please to adjust your testimony to reflect a two minute limit. And what I would like to do, um, we will make sure that you know when your um, two minutes is approaching. So we will uh, have a timer. A bell will ring approximately 30 seconds prior to the two minute limit. So you can wrap up your remarks. Um, we thank you very much for your anticipated cooperation with these rules that have been established as a result of our current condition. Uh, once a lot of time has passed, you will be asked to conclude your remarks. And shortly thereafter, you will be muted and disconnected from the remote meeting. Uh, I also reserve the right to limit the number of speakers uh, where repetitious comments are being made in the same manner and to limit the scope of the testimony to only certain items on the agenda during this particular emergency. Um, so thank you very much. Um, those legislative matters today, your testimony uh, only limited to the bills that were called up by Councilwoman Parker. So we will now reach out. We're going to take a brief moment um, to allow uh, the tech support uh, to tee up the calls. I'm told that there is a timeline um, that they need to adequately time and tee up those individuals. So we'll take around five minutes and then uh, we will continue uh, when notified by tech support. Uh, one last thing, I just want uh, everyone uh, to be aware uh, that this is a public meeting and it's being recorded. So because the meeting is public, participants and viewers have no reasonable expectation of privacy. So by continuing to be in the meeting, you are consenting to being recorded. Uh, so I would ask um, Mr. Decker at the appropriate time, um, once we get the tech support uh, teed up, uh, we will start calling the names.
We are now live, uh, Council President. McCarthy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we are ready for our public comment session, so I hope you all are connected and ready to go. I will now ask the Chief Clerk, Mr. Decker, to please read the first name on our list. Madeline Shakumba. This is she. Good can morning. you hear me? Yes, we can. Good morning. Please proceed with Good your morning. testimony. Good morning, City Council. What I choose to speak on was the uh, bill Which concerning the tenant. Um, Madam? Two zero, huh? Can you just state your name for the record, please? I'm sorry. Madeline Shakumba. Yeah. Go ahead. What I wish to speak on was basically the bills concerning the relief to be provided to tenants concerning um, uh, the feeling of their ability to pay their rent. The bills were 200305, 200294, 200295, and 200302. I do support these bills and hoping that they would provide relief to the tenants. While I'm sitting on this phone listening to city council, I, I'm going to make this comment. I'm appalled at the number of bills that you people are trying to pass under the cold uh, pandemic. How do you expect people to be with all these bills you've been bringing up here and be on top of these things? I'm, this is very serious activity by city council concerning these bills. I, I know I'm supposed to speak on, but I'm going to speak on this because I have never seen such a list of bills in my life. And then you expect the public to comment on these bills when you, you're not even having session? And you don't even know when the sessions are being held for committees to even speak on these bills? I mean, what, this is really a uh, uh, shame. I mean, I'm, I'm appalled at the, these activities. And you know that you also had an all-night session last night. I don't know what the hell you're doing on an all-night session. But I'm, uh, I'm fabricasting. How can you be passing all these bills? It must have been at least 30 bills I sat here writing down on my paper. Okay. Uh, I know I'm supposed to speak on the bill. I already told you the bill I too. Okay. But I, I'm just really appalled at the number of bills that you're trying to squeeze through the civil council using COVID as a cover up to pass a lot of bills that you know the public can't have access to, can't get access to. How are we going to fight this? I don't know. But I'm really going to, I'm putting forth my foot to tell you right now. No, I can't. Oof. This is just too much for me to handle. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, madam. Bye. Bye. Adam Butler. Shoot, damn. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Just please state your name Hi. for the record and proceed with your testimony. My name is Adam Butler. This testimony is in regards to Bill 200350. I'm a volunteer at the Cesar Andreu Iglesias Garden, which is located in the proposed overlay district that this bill would create. The garden was created by neighbors to provide food and a gathering place in an area that has been completely neglected by the city for decades. Unchecked new construction has already been devastating to this particular area. Dozens of families have been displaced in the past years as predatory developers have acquired property, neglected real estate, and ignored the pleas of neighbors upset about the impact of construction on their homes and open spaces. This is a spot zoning bill by the Planning Commission's own description, and it shouldn't even be under consideration. It is clearly designed to benefit. It is clearly designed to benefit a development project that will be led by Scanapico Development, who have no apparent experience in this neighborhood. There has been no community involvement in the planning process and introducing the zoning and variance without, at a minimum, giving neighbors an opportunity to respond to a specific plan is totally unacceptable, pandemic or not. If indeed there will be an affordable housing component of this program, the neighbors would like to have input on how that will be defined, who will benefit, and how that commitment will be guaranteed by the stakeholders. In addition, the introduction of a 200-foot structure in this neighborhood is a radical change and should include proactive community discussions. Scanner Pico, APM, and the Councilperson Sanchez's office proposed that a huge disposition of this property be given away earlier this year. We opposed it, and the land bank agreed to delay. The Planning Commission heard testimony on this voted to delay, and the Rules Committee overruled them. The conversation has still not happened with the community, and seeing a zoning bill come forward without any notice to the neighbors who have been impacted has enhanced the feeling among neighbors that these projects will happen whether anyone in the neighborhood wants them to happen or not. Council should not allow it. I am limited in time, and I have a lot more to say, and I'll leave you with this. Stop treating us like we are stupid. Everyone understands when we are being manipulated. Tear down every racist statue. 
abolish the tax abatement, defund the PPD, and save our neighborhoods. Thank, thank you so much for your testimony, sir. George Gould. Next speaker is George Gould. Next speaker, Mr. Decker. Next speaker, Kevin Moyer. Can you, this is Kevin Moyer on the record. Can you hear me? Yes, good morning. Just state your name for the record and proceed with your good morning. Kevin Moyer, I'll be speaking on behalf of a few of the housing bills, starting with 200-295. This is the eviction moratorium extension. I ask that City Council clarify what an action is in regard to this bill. It's currently unclear what constitutes an action as far as it should be unlawful for a landlord to take any steps in furtherance um, to what those steps may be. Number two, this bill should include some kind of requirement on the tenant's end to provide some kind of proof that they are affected negatively by COVID, um, be it financially or through the illness. Right now, it requires nothing on the end of tenants. So even tenants that are perfectly financially are unaffected by this. Number three, fund it. If it's so important to city council that tenants not be kicked to the curb, we understand that, but it needs to be funded. It needs to be funded by the city. So it's not funded by the city. Bill number 20305. Allow, um, I want to read part of this one, section 17 of the Pennsylvania Constitution. We're going to ex post facto for laws. No ex post facto law nor any law impairing the obligation of contracts or making irrevocable any grant grant or special privileges shall be passed. This law is unconstitutional. It will be challenged. I urge city council not to try to ex post facto affect private contracts. Um, this is the one that admits for a year long repayment plan. This is essentially the same as requiring grocery stores to give out carts of groceries in exchange for IOUs or telling credit card companies that they must waive payments uh, in the central goods for the year. You're putting all the costs on the property owners and I urge city council to fund these programs and pay the owners what they're rightfully do if it's so important for them to uh, continue. Uh, those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony, sir. Thank you. The next speaker is Vikram Patel. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Um, um, please uh, state your name for the record and please proceed with your testimony. Yeah, uh, my name is Vic Patel. Uh, I'm an attorney at the, uh, uh, the housing unit at Community Legal Services. And I'm here speaking in support of the bills in the Emergency Housing Protections Act. Um, First, I'd like to express gratitude to all the council members who have supported these bills and uh, to the sponsors, especially council member um, Jim Brooks Dauphier. Uh, every day, uh, all of us that work as part of the Philadelphia Eviction Prevention Project receive numerous calls from uh, renters who are struggling right now because of the pandemic. It is renters have lost their jobs, and even though they've applied for unemployment compensation, they have not received what they qualified for, especially right now because the state has slowed down the dispersal of payments. So rental assistance has only reached a small portion of the renters that need it. Uh, the city sewer program approved rental assistance for 4,000 households, for which we're very thankful for the city uh, for, but you know, this only really accounts for a small percentage of the households that need rental assistance. Uh, the state uh, also has its own rental assistance program, but you know, this isn't even going to start taking applications until next month and won't even start paying out until later after that. Right now, the money to provide landlords with back rent and renters with stable housing isn't there yet. These bills will give renters and landlords the time necessary to access that $150 million that the state has allocated for rental assistance. Also give renters and landlords the structure through the diversion program to resolve disputes and uh, negotiate reasonable payment agreements um, while also preventing renters from drowning and mounting late fees and protect them from illegal lockouts. Now this impending wave of evictions, it's, it's not going to hit all Philadelphians deeply um, because of systemic 
racial inequality, Philadelphia's black community has been affected most by housing instability before the pandemic. During the pandemic, it was once again hit the hardest. And if these bills don't pass, it's going to be hit once again because of our inaction. I urge you, please, Thank pass you. these bills for the sake of the city and everyone Thank uh, you. affected by the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. The next speaker is William Lublin. I uh, just want to remind everyone, just want to call you. You have two minute time. Good morning. Back. Good morning. State your Good name. morning, council members. My Please. name is my, right. my name is William Lublin. I am a Philadelphia native, a real estate professional for almost 50 years, a property management professional and the owner of numerous properties in the city of Philadelphia. I would speak against the um, bills known together as the uh, EHPA uh, bills 294, 95, 301, 302, 304, and 305. While I believe they are well-intentioned, they can be devastating to the owners and operators of rental properties and penalize those individuals and businesses disproportionately, many of whom are small investors with only one or two properties or elderly retirees relying on rental income to support their families or provide their retirement income. Rational property owners don't want to evict anyone. The time and costs are too great. They always result in a business loss for the property owner. And almost any property owner I have ever met in 50 years would rather have a tenant making some sort of periodic payment plan than have to spend money to evict them, absorb the lost rent, pay to renovate the house, to clean out the items that are left behind as too heavy for the tenants to carry, and then be forced to take 30 to 60 to 90 days to re-rent the unit. Obviously, there are more tenants than landlords, and while society has long vilified the landlord and previous tenants, a testimony before council painted pictures of rapacious landlords and victimized tenants, not every landlord is vicious and every tenant is not a victim. Property owners are important to the city. In February of this year, I sent checks for almost $400,000 to the city of Philadelphia for 2020 real estate taxes, and I am certainly not alone. Property owners generate billions of dollars in revenue for the city. The city also looks to landlords to pay water and sewer rents, even when they are the responsibility of the tenants and their rent is being received. These ordinances place the burden of housing the tenants on the back of the property owners without providing them any source of relief or recovery from additional fees charged by the city during these periods of non-payment. Owners are still liable for mortgage payments and late fees. They may face foreclosure on the individual properties or foreclosure on their primary residences. Tenants that are not paying rent typically are not maintaining the property. Right. And not maintaining the property, Sir, put them, the landlords... You just kind of wrap it up because your yeah. time is up. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Um, all I'm asking is that the considerations of the ordinances would be more practical if there was a balanced approach and some input from trade associations, landlord organizations as well, to perhaps help the city provide some relief to these property owners while protecting the tenants that are also victims of the pandemic. Thank you very much for your time and for the good work that you guys are trying to do, however you pass these. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is George Gould. I'm trying to testify. Okay. Yeah, we called you earlier. George Gould. Go ahead. Gould, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Mr. Gould. Please proceed. Okay, thank you. We have two minutes. Good morning. My name is George Gould, and I thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. I will speak about the five emergency housing protection bills up for final passage. I'm a senior attorney at Community Legal Services, and I've worked with many of you on many important housing legislation over many years. These bills certainly fit that category. I'd like to thank Councilpersons Gauthier, Brooks, and Jim, and their staff, and other Councilpersons and their staff for all their hard work on these tremendously important bills. The eviction moratorium bill will extend the moratorium when the bill is passed up until August 31st, unless the tenant is causing imminent threat or harm. The eviction diversion bill will create a division diversion program requiring a conciliation conference between the landlord and tenant prior to filing an eviction action. I have been very involved, I was very involved in the creation of the mortgage foreclosure diversion program with Judge Rizzo 
and this program will save many homes. It was mentioned that there is going to be a state rental assistance program, although it may not be for a while. Hopefully this will be part of the eviction diversion. And what will happen is landlords will get the money that they are owed. The legal lockout bill would amend the current law and allow tenants to bring civil action for illegal lockouts and be able to restore possession, damages, and attorney's fees and costs. The hardship repayment bill would require landlords to agree to enter into repayment agreements which would have the tenant pay, begin paying the full amount due after August 31st and pay the arrearages over a ninth-month period. I believe, despite the previous testimony, that this is very reasonable. Finally, the waiver, the, the waiver of late fees. A landlord will not be able to charge late fees and interest on back rent during the COVID emergency period. Again, I thank you for working on these important bills. They are needed very, very much because what will happen if nothing is passed, there's going to be an amazing amount of chaos in this city with tenants being evicted without being able to pay and landlords getting their bills. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Jacob Speedo. Jacob Spidel. I'll remind speakers you use star six to unmute yourselves. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. I'll state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Good morning. My name is Jacob Spidel. I'm the director of tenant rights at Senior Law Center. I'm speaking in support of the five emergency housing bills. At Senior Law Center, we provide free legal assistance to thousands of seniors each year, including to victims of elder abuse and financial exploitation, elders facing housing crises and homelessness, and grandparents raising grandchildren. We support these five bills as a small step part of a balanced approach to respond to this unprecedented crisis and address a coming avalanche of evictions. COVID-19 has not gone away. If people are forced into unsafe living situations, we can expect another wave in infection and for more vulnerable seniors to die. With this package of bills, tenants will still owe rent landlords will still be entitled to rent. What these bills do is they create an orderly process and time for tenants to get back to work, for tenants to receive back unemployment benefits and government assistance, and to use this money to pay their landlords the rent that is owed. Money is coming. Uh, there are, as you've already heard, $150 million that have been allocated by the state. Um, and we certainly hope to see other assistance potentially from the city. Tenants who are looking to move need time for the rental market to open up again and allow people to move. People can't move because nobody is moving. Please pass this package of five bills. Thank you so much for your testimony. The next speaker is Victor Pinkney. You need to use star six to unmute yourself. Victor Pinkney. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, please state okay. your, your record and proceed right. with your testimony. Yeah. My name is Victor Pinkney Sr. Good morning, Council President and Council Members. I'm the Vice President of HAPCO Philadelphia. HAPCO Philadelphia is the Commonwealth's largest membership organization for providers of low to moderate income private rental housing. HAPCO Philadelphia membership owns primarily single-family duplex rentals on the streets and neighborhoods of Philadelphia. I also own and manage rental properties in Philadelphia. We do understand during these trying times that we all are going, going through hardships. 
tenants as well as landlords. You have good tenants, bad tenants. You have good landlords and bad landlords. Well, I say that I'm saying I'm testifying today against Bill 200294. 200295, 200302, and 200305. If these bills are passed, it will have a devastating effect on rental property owners. I currently have a tenant that has not paid rent since February. That predates any COVID-19 emergency period. I was finally able to get a court date scheduled for July the 14th, which I doubt very seriously that that will actually happen. If these bills are, are passed, my case will get continued. If the tenant alleges a COVID-19 hardship, which they surely will do, and I will have no to dispute the allegation. I will then have to wait until September to send out a notice for conciliation conference in October to get into court, if I'm lucky, and then will not get an actual lockout until at least November, December. This city has no intention of paying, and I'm now going to lose nine months of rent. What would be devastating is a person owning a sick one home, one rental property. I have another tenant who's working and has the money to pay rent, but realizes he does not have to. So it's not paying, and there's nothing I can do about it. The state moratorium on eviction is on July 10th. Tenants should not be allowed to live rent-free after that date. Under these bills, however, this tenant will be allowed to live rent-free for at least an additional three months. My business and many of my members of my organization cannot survive on, on this. The governor's emergency de declaration wasn't declared until March 6, 2020. Under these bills, I the COVID-19 emergency period retroactively to March 1, 2020, a date that is, that is before there was an emergency. Additionally, for risk that were due before March 1st, right, I have stated I will be presented for proceeding on these cases as well. Found regarding the hardest payment plan. That's the thing, Nick, you can wrap it up. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, these, these bills take away any incentive for tenants to pay rent on time, even if they can. My mortgage payment taxes, utilities, and repair bills, however, do not stop. Not right. having the rent to pay for these expenses will destroy my business. Thank you for listening, council members, and please vote against these bills. Thank you, sir, for your testimony. The next speaker is Sherry Thomas. Hello, Council. Can you hear me? Yes, good morning. To state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony, please. Yes, good morning. My name is Sherry Thomas, and I'm the Director of Housing at the Legal Clinic for the Disabled. I'm here to support the bills in the Emergency Housing Protection Act. The Legal Clinic for the Disabled, we represent people with injuries or illnesses like stroke, brain injury, diabetes, respiratory illness, and mental health diagnoses. These folks are already at high risk of contracting COVID and now are worrying about being evicted during the pandemic. The risk to them of fatally contracting the disease is ever present and housing is a human right that can literally save lives. If you don't pass these bills, we're going to see large numbers of people evicted within a short period of time. People will have to quickly find housing in a market that just recently reopened. This is really difficult for people with mobility issues, special needs or limitations and many will be forced to move in with family or friends, um, resulting in crowding conditions or entering an already burdened shelter system. When we think about reopening, we have to think of the high risk of transmission when people are shuffled around in this way. Rental assistance, as we've heard, is a crucial piece of recovery, but it is only one piece. I've represented stroke survivors, people with brain injuries, and others with impairments. And these clients often have difficulty gathering documentation, communicating, and processing information. The rental assistance is really of little use if people lack the time and the ability to get to it before an eviction takes place. This legislation is a major step in ensuring the time to access it. The policy as you'll set in place today will impact these families for years to come. The trauma of an eviction is lasting. Data shows that it is black and brown communities that bear the brunt of the trauma. We know policies matter, they impact generations of people. And being homeless can change the course of someone's life and their children's lives. Today, you have Thank an opportunity you. to do that, and you must take it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so very much for your uh, testimony. The next witness. The next speaker is Leah Yaman. Please use star six to unmute yourself. Leah Yaman. Hello. We 
We can hear you. We can hear you now, Leia. Just please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Absolutely. My name is Leia Yarman. And thank you for hearing me. And thank you to the person who went before me whose testimony I wholeheartedly agree with. Are you ready for me to go? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, good morning, all. My name is Leia Yarmus. I am a social worker serving people who experience housing insecurity in this city. As I didn't hear enough on this call, I just want to say housing is a basic human right. And during this pandemic, I've been shocked and saddened and angered by the lack of city action in protecting and offering housing. The lack of access to maintenance of and safety in housing is violent. And it's easy to see the oppressive racial element when you look at the statistics of who it is that experiences this poverty and lack of housing security in Philadelphia. I speak today about the Emergency Housing Protection Act. The collection of bills should be passed. And I want it to be on record that I do not believe it is enough. The bill asks for an extension of the moratorium on evictions, for mediations prior to evictions, rent repayment plans, and the waiver of rent late fees. I believe that this bill can be a foundation upon which further necessary protections can be built. I would like it, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, our citizens deserve housing, and I believe that their housing can be protected through rental forgiveness and for pushing the burden to be placed not on individuals, not on landlords, but on financial institutions. We should not be evicting people in so many blocks. Oh, poop, is that my whole time? Uh, yes, I know it, it comes up rather quickly. If you could just complete, if you could just yeah, complete your sentence, that'll be great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I support this plan, but I also believe that in order to protect the people of Philadelphia, uh, we need to have a rental forgiveness. And... Uh, Dang, I didn't expect it to go so fast, so I guess that's all I have to say. Thank all you. right, listen, thank you so very much for your testimony. We greatly appreciate you sharing with us uh, today your perspective. The, uh, the, the, next, the next witness, uh, Mr. Decker? Marquise Combs. Star six to unmute. Hello? Can y'all hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Marquise. Do us a favor and please right. state your name uh, for the record and proceed with your testimony. All right. Uh, my name is Marquise Combs. Uh, uh, today I am representing Altman Tenants Union, and I'm speaking uh, on behalf of for the uh, emergency uh, uh, housing act that we are uh, discussing. Uh, millions of people have already lost their jobs and had their income in some other way affected by COVID-19. Uh, those of us lucky, uh, those of us lucky enough to get through the unemployment website, uh, still aren't in a position to uh, have financially saved first, last, and security plus moving fees uh, in the event that uh, this mass eviction, uh, that, uh, this, in the event that this mass eviction does does take place, uh, what will what will most likely happen uh, is a lot of people will be forced into homelessness and. There's never a good time to be homeless, but in the middle of a pandemic, it is especially cruel uh, to uh, put capital over community right now. Uh, and I believe that is what a lot of these so-called good landlords are doing. Uh, uh, what happens if you let us stay? Uh, the, landlords lose, the landlords lose out on some money. Well, guess what? A lot of your tenants have been losing out on money for the past few months. Uh, they've been scratching and surviving, trying to make a $1,200 stimulus check uh, stretch throughout these past few months. So no, like a lot of people don't have uh, don't have money for rent right now. Uh, but I would just like to ask these ask these landlords who are against this bill to really ask themselves what do they think will really happen to their tenants if they uh, if, 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 if they do evict them right now. Uh, do they really think that their tenants will be? Do, do they really think their tenants will still be safe given the COVID nineteen pandemic? Do they think that their tenants will be able to find housing uh, in this current market, or do they actually realize that they are condemning their tenants to homelessness and to health risk? Uh, and that's that's my time. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Marquise. Uh, next witness to testify. The next speaker is Samantha Petty. Star six to unmute yourself. Samantha Petty. The next speaker is Yosuke Araski. Star six to unmute. Yosuke Araski. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Just okay. please, please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Hi, my name is Yosuke Araki. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the Emergency Housing Protection Act, all the bills included. Um, I find it really ironic how all of these uh, rental associations like PROA and HAPCO are asking for, uh, or asking for empathy from city council when that's literally the uh, one trait that they lack, uh, profits over human lives. I mean, the lack of social empathy and solidarity to get people through a pandemic is disgusting. But the question in regard to housing right now is who does the financial responsibility of pandemic response fall onto? It should not fall onto renters as these psychopaths would lead you to believe. It should not even necessarily fall onto these psychopaths either. It should fall entirely on the government's duty to wholly neutralize the effects of this pandemic. But bipartisan leadership on the federal level has given 80% of benefits from tax changes in the stimulus bill to millionaires. Nancy Pelosi is already driving through more corporate handouts, ha handouts in the HEROES Act. There is a cultural and structural lack of social empathy and solidarity to get people through a pandemic of this proportion. These bills will provide significant protection against inevitable reactions that will be taken by financially hit rental owners who will blame and punish their helpless tenants for their monetary losses, punishable by homelessness and consequently punishable by death. We're in a global pandemic. Not passing these bills will hold you accountable to death. It is incumbent upon city council to pass this package of bills, all of them, uh, which unfortunately wouldn't even meet the degree of threats we're faced with. Eviction mediation and repayment buys time, but still ordering the responsibility of pandemic response on renters. But not doing so will set a terrible precedent for future pandemics that will only become more frequent and mounting despair on your constituents which, as we've seen in the past few weeks, that, will explode in desperation. Thank you. That Thank will, you. You're welcome. Thank you so very much for your patience. We greatly appreciate it. The next witness scheduled to testify, Mr. Decker. Onam Pri, Pri, Priek. Star six to unmute yourself. Phonum. Priyak. Next speaker, Nora Purcell. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Nora. Listen, Nora, state your name for the record and then proceed with your testimony. You'll hear a bell go off the signal when it's, uh, your time is up, okay? All right, thank you. Thanks. This is Nora Purcell. I will give some facts about the current crises and how it will affect the most vulnerable. The coronavirus shows no signs of slowing, 
Florida had 2,600 new cases yesterday since they reopened. Black people are dying from coronavirus at three times the rate of white people. Two million total cases in the U.S. 27,975 new cases since yesterday in the U.S. 20 million people in the U.S. are currently unemployed. One in six black workers are unemployed. Black Latino people, black and Latino people are two times more likely to rent their homes. The Federal CARES Act is set to end July 31st. What will happen when all these people lose money from the CARES Act, are unemployed, and are allowed to be evicted? Housing is a human right, and the most efficient way to keep people healthy during the global pandemic is to keep them in their houses. Ithaca, New York, has been the first city in the U.S. to enact a rent freeze for the duration of the pandemic, and I suggest Philadelphia set an example and do the same. At a time when our black community members need support the most, ending eviction moratoriums will worsen coronavirus and harm poor renters in the city who are disproportionately black. Um, I appreciate the Tenants Union of Philadelphia for informing me about this meeting, community legal services. Um, I talked faster than I meant to. The Housing Protection Act is the least the city can do. People are dying. And to save their lives, you should keep them in their homes. Thank you so very much for your testimony. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you. All righty. Um, Mr. Decker, can you please uh, call the next witness to testify? Fellini Williams. Hi, my name is Fellini Williams. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you well. Listen, just state your name again for the record and please proceed with your testimony. Thank you. Um, my name is Delaney Williams. I'm speaking in favor of the five bills of the Emergency Housing Protection Act. I want to thank um, everyone for the chance to speak today and the people that have spoken in favor of this act before me. Um, with the amount of people that are unemployed as a result of COVID-19, a lot of people are struggling to have money to feed themselves and their families um, and evicting them from the house is actually the worst thing you can do in this situation. Um, landlords and developers have been focused on their profits and how much the money they can make off of people for a long time and not the basic human right of housing that we all deserve. Um, we need to figure out as a community how we can protect everyone in this crisis and not kick people out on the streets. Um, on a personal note, our my landlord has been telling us to um, move out in July, and it's terrifying to think of the possibility of having to look for housing in this time. Um, but thank you for the time to speak, and that's all I have. Thank you so very much for your testimony. Mr. Decker, will you please uh, call the next witness? Natalie DeFrank. Please Hello? Use. Natalie? Yes. Yes, please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. You'll hear a bell, uh, Natalie, signaling when your time is up. Okay. Hi, my name is Natalie DeFrank, and I am a renter in the city of Philadelphia as well as a sexual health educator. And I want to speak to... Um, I want to speak to supporting the five emergency housing bills. I specifically work within the LGBT community, and I'm aware of the immense amount of trauma people are experiencing at this point, especially the black LGBT community. When we are not giving housing at a point where black people are experiencing two pandemics at once or being murdered by the police as they walk outside or sleep in their home is unacceptable. Not only will having housing protect, that, but protect individuals in the city of Philadelphia from experiencing from being able to protect themselves physically from what has been informed and paid for by this state. By staying at home is the safest way that we can do this, other than spreading the COVID-19 process. Any jobs that are available now for people are only jobs that are used for essential workers where, where corporations are not providing accurate or appropriate protection to their workers. And this is unacceptable. There is no way that landlords are going to sit here and say that that renters are the ones who owe them money when they are obviously financially privileged to be able to own multiple properties. Renters as a whole are people who have marginalized identities and do not have access to own land within this area. 
this is unfair and right and wrong. And we need to, to support the five emergency housing bills in order to protect the community and hope that people experience less trauma than what they already do from just walking in the street outside. Thank you. That's it. Thank you for your testimony. Mr. Decker, will you please call the next speaker? Lori Fulton. Yes, good morning, City Council. This is Lori Fulton, for the record. Um, I'm speaking in support of the Housing Protection, the, the Emergency Housing Protection Act. Um, I am a singer and voice actor, and I have been um, proudly living in Philadelphia since 1981. I implore you to listen. When the moratorium on evictions is lifted, what will thousands of Philadelphians do? COVID-19 has hospitalized and killed thousands of Pennsylvanians. Although Pennsylvania's numbers are lower every day, more are still, more Pennsylvanians are still dying. The, the coronavirus deadly impact has closed performance spaces, theaters, and restaurants where I work. All of my work as a musician has been canceled or postponed until 2021. What will happen to me and thousands of Philadelphians who are out of work due to no fault of their own when the moratorium on evictions is lifted? How long will the pandemic unemployment assistance be awarded? Will there be another stimulus bill to help Philadelphia residents make ends meet? I just received my, my $1,200 a week ago. City Council members, please listen to the voices of Philadelphians who are the lifeblood of Philadelphia's economy and culture. I ask City Council members to think on the alternative. Think about the thousands of Philadelphia constituents losing their homes, apartments, and businesses, finding themselves homeless and completely impoverished for the first time in their lives. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. The next speaker is Christina Geswali. Please use star six to unmute yourself. I think I did. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Just uh, state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. Okay, good. Uh, my name is Christina Jaswaldi. Uh, good morning. I'm a renter in Philadelphia, and I'm also part of a Philly Tenants Union. And I'm speaking in favor today of the Emergency Housing Protections Act. Um, of all five bills, but I really want to narrow in toward Bill uh, 200 304. Um, this is a bill that asks for relief and recovery of losses when an illegal or forced eviction happens. And just to make very clear, uh, this is already happening during COVID. And this is also something, it's not new, you know, after COVID, it's something that has happened before. COVID as well. Landlords, small, medium, and large, just shutting off utilities, going up at the property, sending building managers, or sending intimidating family members, forcing entry of the, to the property to forcefully evict their tenants. And a lot of times it's an illegal eviction. The court hasn't fully processed. They don't have an active rental license even. Sometimes it's a mass eviction. We've seen that already in our city. Um, and like if a bill can't even, if this bill is only asking for a minimum of $2,000 toward recovery of losses for the tenant when something like this happens, if that can't pass, like to recover people's I mean, I don't think $2,000 can recover anyone's trauma and um, losses really from a forced eviction or an illegal eviction. But as a bare minimum, if that can't pass, then I just urge us to think, like, what are we protecting? What myth are we protecting about how this city and housing properties work? It's just as bad as people protecting the Columbus statue. It's worse, actually. Um, and yeah, that's all. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. Next speaker is Alicia Frosto.
Good morning. Good morning. Uh, just state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. My name is Alicia Fausto, and I'm a former leader with 1PA, a former teacher and grocery store worker. Thank you for providing me this opportunity to testify on the ways in which Philadelphia City Council can help ensure that vulnerable renters are protected during this economic and health crisis. My housemate used to work at a restaurant while I worked as an independent educator and a part-time at Mom's Organic Market. When restaurants and schools closed, both of us lost half our incomes. We reached out to our homeowners or landlords and informed them of this. They responded and said they would reduce our rent to $1,200. We tried to negotiate for larger relief, but they wouldn't move the price down. We still cannot afford this, but we had a choice. Choose $1,200 a month or be homeless. It was made very clear that the priority has and would be that the rent is paid and not that the health or well-being of us as individuals is important. The email went on with them sharing information about how we could pay based on unemployment checks. They also suggested jobs that we know are highly at risk. And for what? They got in the business of providing housing, a human right, a right that shouldn't be negotiated, especially during a global pandemic, a business that has a history of shutting black and brown people out of the wealth game. This can very well lead to many of us being formally or informally evicted next month. This is my story. My landlords were two white men who were actively gentrifying a predominantly black neighborhood in West Philadelphia, and they decided to rent to us two brown queer folks. During the negotiation process, they had the nerve to tell us they were nervous to rent to us in the first place because of our jobs, and they told us to consider not renewing our lease because we couldn't afford it. And what if we wanted to renew and stay in our home? They could have found some excuse or raised the rent, and many black and brown folks can't afford the current rent price anyways. There was a housing crisis before this moment, and the global pandemic was not something we created. The wealth gap is not something we created either. It's something the government created, and it's something the government has a choice to fix at this moment. Racism and classism in the poorest big city of the United States still runs the housing game. And the underlying prejudices and assumptions about who we were or what we could afford showed up in our negotiation process. Philadelphia City Council members, I am calling from California because of this crisis to demand that you pass the full Emergency Housing Protection Act so renters like myself can be protected during and beyond this pandemic. Wrap it up. Good. Thank you. Thanks for your testimony. The next speaker is Kyla Van Buren. <clears throat> Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, my name is Kyla Van Buren. Um, throughout this crisis, after losing my job, I volunteered multiple days every week to try and support other tenants. Um, I fired neighborhoods answered endless housing questions, read through leases, and helped people try to communicate with landlords. And throughout all of this, the only thing that's clear to me is the severity of this housing crisis and how few people, how few options people in this city have. Um, we need more rental assistance. I know people keep saying it's coming, um, but with no clear promise and no protections, we're all left waiting in fear for what our landlords will say next and what will happen when the courts reopen in July. Recently, I've been trying to advocate for a tenant who has become disabled due to a complex illness. For two years, she's been trying to secure a housing subsidy. And during this pandemic, she lost her work, so is in even more trouble. Um, when she tried applying for unemployment and other public health benefits, um, she's been stuck in the bureaucracy of that system and still hasn't heard back or received any aid. And even if she does get granted aid, it will only be about $500, which is less than half of her rent. Um, do people like this deserve to be slapped with evictions, late fees, back rent, and harassment from landlords? Just because Governor Wolf has declared business as usual doesn't mean that it's safe for Philadelphia renters to be evicted and displaced while we are still very much in the middle of this health crisis. Um, I... I ask you all of you city council members, please extend the eviction moratorium. Please allow for year long repayment plans and please pass the emergency housing protection act. Thank you. There are no other speakers in the public comment list, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Decker. Can you please recognize uh, Catherine? We will recognize Councilwoman Catherine Gilmore Richardson uh, at this time for a point of information. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader and Council President and colleagues. I ask to be voted. Uh, 
I ask to be noted as voting aye on all bills and resolutions. I need to be excused for special business. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, leave shall be granted. Uh, the record Thank you, Council record. President. I vote. Thank you. Um, that concludes our testimony from witnesses. We will <clears throat> now consider the resolutions and bills on the second reading and final passes calendar. And Mr. Decker, if you can please read the title of bills number 200296. An ordinance constituting the 15th supplemental ordinance to the general gas works revenue bond ordinance of 1998 authorizing the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the city to sell either a public or private sale, one or more series of gas works revenue bonds and gas works revenue bonds to refund such bonds. Thank you. The chair recognizes Councilman Green for an amendment to bill number 200296. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I would like to offer an amendment on your behalf to bill number 200296. A copy of the amendment has been circulated to all members of council. I move for the adoption of the amendment. Second. Thank you. All in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. And bill number 200296 has been amended. Bill number 200296 has been amended will be placed on the final passes calendar at our next session of council. Um, Mr. Decker, please read the title of 200297. An ordinance constituting the 23rd Supplemental Ordinance to the Restated General Water and Wastewater Revenue Bond Ordinance of 1989 is supplemented, authorizing the Bond Committee to issue and sell one or more series of tax-exempt or taxable water and wastewater ref re refunding revenue bonds and revenue refunding bonds. Thank you. This bill has been read on two different days. The question now is shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, please call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Aye. Aye. Councilman Brooks. Councilman Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson is voting aye. Councilman Green. Councilman Green. Aye. Aye. Councilwoman Gim. Aye. Councilman Heenan. Councilman Heenan. Aye. Aye. Councilman Johnson. Aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman O. Aye. Councilman O'Neill. Aye. Councilwoman Parker. Aye. Councilwoman Kimberly Sanchez. Aye. Councilman Squilla. Aye. Councilman Thomas. Aye. Council President Clark. Aye. The ayes are 17 and nays are zero. Majority of all the members present having voted in the affirmative, the bill passes. Mr. Decker, please read the title of bill number 200298. An ordinance authorizing the bond committee to sell bonds at public or private negotiated sale to provide funds for various capital municipal purposes, providing for appropriations to the sinking fund commission for the payment of such bonds, authorizing agreements to provide credit or payment of liquidity sources for the bonds in connection with issuance of the bonds and certain other actions. Thank you. This bill has been read on two different days. The question now is shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bath. Aye. Councilwoman Brooks. Aye. Councilman Dom. Aye. 
Councilwoman Gautier. Aye. Councilwoman Gilmore. Gilmore. Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson is voting aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilwoman Gim. Aye. Aye. Councilman Heenan. Aye. Councilman Johnson. Aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman O. Aye. Councilman O'Neill. Aye. Councilwoman Parker. Aye. Councilwoman Karina Sanchez. Aye. Councilman Squilla. Aye. Councilman Thomas. Aye. Council President Clark. Aye. The ayes are 17, nays are zero. Majority of all members having voted in affirm that the bill passes. Mr. Decker, please read the title of bill number 200299. An ordinance authorizing the city treasurer on behalf of the city to enter into an amendment agreement with Citizens Bank of Pennsylvania for provision of payroll banking services to the city. Thank you. This bill having been read on two different days. The question now is shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Dr. Paul Roll. Councilwoman Bass. Aye. Councilwoman Brooks. Aye. Councilman Dom? Aye. Councilwoman Gartier? Aye. Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson is voting aye. Councilman Green? Councilman Green? You're, you're muted, Councilman. Aye, sorry, sorry, aye. Councilwoman Gim. Aye. Aye. Councilman Heenan. Councilman Heenan. Aye. Aye. Councilman Johnson. Aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman O. Aye. Councilman O'Neill. Aye. Councilwoman Parker. Aye. Councilwoman Kimberly Sanchez. Aye. Councilman Squilla. Aye. Councilman Thomas. Aye. Council President Clark. Aye, the ayes are 17 and nays are zero. Majority of all members present having voted in the affirmative, the bill passes. Mr. Decker, please read the title of bill number 200300. An ordinance approving the fiscal year 2021 capital budget, providing for expenditures for the capital purposes of the Philadelphia Gas Works, including the supplying of funds in connection therewith, subject to certain constraints and conditions, and acknowledging receipt of the revised forecast of capital budgets for fiscal years 2022 through 2026. This bill having been read on two different days, the question now is shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Aye. Councilwoman Brooks. Aye. Councilman Dom. Aye. Councilwoman Gautier. Aye. Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson is voting aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilwoman Gim. Aye. Councilman Heenan. Councilman Heenan. Aye. Councilman Johnson. Aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman O. Aye. Councilman O'Neill. 
Aye. Councilwoman Parker? Aye. Councilwoman Kiruna Sanchez? Aye. Councilman Squilla? Aye. Really trying to. Councilman Thomas? Aye. Council President Clark? Aye. Aye. Aye to 17 and A's are zero. Majority of all members having voted in the firms of the bill passes. Mr. Becker, please call, read the title of bill number 200-329. An ordinance approving a substantial amendment to the annual action plan 2019 through 2020 to add $40,410,779 in federal coronavirus aid, relief, and economic security act CARES funding. Chair Chair recognizes Councilman Green for an amendment to bill number 200-329. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to offer an amendment on your behalf to bill number 200-329. A copy of the amendment has been circulated to all members of council. I move for the adoption of the amendment. Second. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. And bill number 200-329 has been amended. Bill number 200-329, as amended, will be placed on the final passage calendar at our next session of council. Mr. Decker, please read the title of bill number 200-330. An ordinance authorizing the Director of Planning and Development on behalf of the city to file applications with the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for a community development block grant to file applications to participate in the home investment partnership program and the emergency solutions grant program and to apply for housing opportunities for persons with AIDS grant and to file applications with the commonwealth to obtain grants under the act of april 12 1956 as amended to prevent and eliminate blight thank you this bill having been read on two different days the question now is shall the bill pass finally mr decker please call the roll councilwoman bass Aye. Councilwoman Brooks? Aye. Councilman Dom? Aye. Councilwoman Gautier? Aye. Councilwoman, Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson is voting aye. Councilman Green? Aye. Councilwoman Gim? Aye. Councilman Heenan? Councilman Heenan? Aye. Councilman Johnson? Aye. Councilman Jones? Aye. Councilman O? Aye. Councilman O'Neill? Aye. Councilwoman Parker? Aye. Councilwoman Kiruna Sanchez? Aye. Councilman Spilla? Aye. Councilman Thomas? Aye. Council President Clark. Aye. Uh, the ayes are 17 and nays are zero. Majority of all members having voted in the affirmative, the bill passes. Thank you very much. Uh, Councilwoman Gim, I think you wanted to be recognized before the reading of 200294. Yes, thank you so much, Council President. Well, um, first, I would like to thank Council and this body for its tremendous leadership in the area of housing. I am glad to be part of a council that has dramatically committed its commitment to housing as a human right through eviction protection and common sense renter protections. This bill that we are about to vote on and the four following are the next step in our legacy as a council body. Thanks to my colleagues, especially to you, council president, and thank you to the leadership of our appropriations chair, Maria Quinones Sanchez. We've been able to make and maintain historic investments in the housing trust fund, We've been able to create a nationally renowned Philadelphia eviction prevention project and pass right to council legislation. Now we are meeting this moment in the midst of a COVID-19 pandemic. In 12 days time, rent is due yet again, but there will not be another rent due date without answers for hundreds of thousands of Philadelphians who have called upon us to take action. We know how much this matters. $11 million in PHL rent assist was exhausted in five days with more than three times the number of qualifying people. Our courts need it as they face thousands of cases of eviction, um, thousands of cases that come before them. And in this moment, each of us knows that stable housing is as much a means of racial and economic justice as it is a means of economic recovery. 
we must come together to keep a roof over everyone's head and to turn the corner on housing dignity. When studies showed that 70% of eviction cases in Philadelphia involve black women, it matters for us to take action. When the reinvestment studies show that black communities are targeted for eviction, no matter what the income level is, it matters us. It matters to us to take action. We are committed to making things work. The diversion meeting that we held uh, uh, this week attracted more than 40 members at the highest levels of city leadership, of the courts, and of our advocates and communities. I'm grateful to a housing committee that put us through a rigorous review process and made sure that the amendments that are before you reflect a careful consideration of all the needs, including of our landlords and of our renters. These bills are largely limited to COVID related financial hardships. And it's important for those to know that accusations that no evictions will happen for months is simply not accurate. There will be time and due process, but we need to find ourselves the time to get the resources that we need. Right now, Philadelphia has a chance to be a leader. We help move more than $150 million for rental relief programs at the state level. HUD has just announced that its own eviction moratorium has been extended until August 31st, the exact date that was established that could be established by our city council body. New programs are being created. And what we are asking for from this body is the time, the time to find renters, the resources, and for our landlords to be able to match those resources with the renters um, that they serve. And today we are about to do that. I want to thank my co-introducers of the Emergency Housing Protection Act, council members Brooks and Gautier, who have been fearless and steady in their ability to bring together our landlord and our renter advocates alike to make sure that there are measured decisions that balance all the interests at stake. I'm proud to move these bills alongside of them. I'm grateful for the co-sponsors of 294 and 295, council members Thomas, Jones, Quinones Sanchez, and Heenan. This is our time to think big, to restructure processes and institutions that have long created barriers to opportunity, whether intentional or not for black, brown, and immigrant communities. Today, we have a chance to become a leader when our state and federal governments lagged. Today, we have a chance to show that local government can move nimbly and quickly to give assurances and hope in a time of uncertainty and fear. We march in the footsteps of those who fought for black liberation, and we honor it with bold action and a mission for the people we serve. I want to thank all of my colleagues on council for making all of this possible. And thank you, Council President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Mr. Decker, please read the title of Bill Number 200-294. An ordinance amending various sections of the Philippi Code to address matters related to the landlord and tenant relationship during the novel coronavirus of 2019 pandemic and otherwise, including providing for an eviction diversion program. This bill having been read on two different days, the question now is shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, please call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Aye. Councilwoman Brooks. Aye. Councilman Dom. That's been down. You on? Yes, aye. Councilwoman Gautier. Aye. Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson is voting aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilwoman Gim. Aye. Councilman Heenan. Councilman Heenan. Aye. Councilman Johnson. Aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman O. Aye. Councilman O'Neill. Aye. Councilwoman Parker. Aye. I totally, I do this professionally. Councilwoman. I talk to reporters. Uh, Councilwoman Kennedy Sanchez. Aye. 
Councilman Squallow. Aye. Councilman Thomas. Aye. Council President Clark. Aye, the ayes are 17 and nays are zero. Majority of all members having voted in the affirmative the bill passes. Mr. Decker, please read the title of bill number 200295. An ordinance amending various sections of the Philadelphia Code to address matters related to the landlord and tenant relationship during the novel coronavirus of 2019 pandemic and otherwise, including providing for temporary eviction relief. This bill had been read on two different days. The question now is shall the bill pass fine? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Aye. Councilwoman Brooks. Aye. Councilman Dom. Aye. Councilwoman Gautier. Aye. Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson is voting aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilwoman Gim. Aye. Councilman Heaton. Councilman Heaton. Aye. Councilman Johnson. Aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman O. Aye. Councilman O'Neill. Aye. Councilwoman Parker. Aye. Councilwoman Kimberly Sanchez. Aye. Councilman Squillo. Aye. Councilman Thomas. Aye. Council President Clark. Aye. The ayes are 17 and nays are zero. Majority of all members present voting in the that the bill passes. Mr. Decker, please read the title of bills number 200302. An ordinance amending various sections of the Philadelphia Code to address matters related to the landlord and tenant relationship during the novel coronavirus of 2019 pandemic and otherwise, including providing for the temporary waiver of certain fees. This bill hasn't been read on two different days. The question now, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Aye. Councilwoman Brooks. Aye. Councilman Dom. Aye. Councilwoman Gautier. Aye. Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson is voting aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilwoman Gim. Aye. Aye. Councilman Aye. Councilman Johnson. Aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman O. Aye. Councilman O'Neill. Aye. Councilwoman Parker. Aye. Councilwoman Kimberly Sanchez. Aye. Councilman Squillo. Aye. Councilman Thomas. Aye. Council President Clark. Aye. The ayes are 17, nays are zero. Majority of members present. Voting in affirmative, the bill passes. Mr. Decker, please read the title of 200304. An ordinance amending various sections of the Philadelphia Code to address matters related to the landlord and tenant relationship during the coronavirus of 2019 pandemic and otherwise, including providing for relief to tenants who have been illegally locked out of their residences. This bill has been read on two different days. The question now is shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Aye. Councilwoman Brooks. Aye. Councilman Dom. Aye. Councilwoman Gautier. Aye. Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson is voting aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilwoman Gim. Aye. Councilman Heenan. Aye. Councilman Johnson. Aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman O. Aye. Councilman O'Neill. Aye. That's Woman Parker. Aye. That's Woman Camilla Sanchez. Aye. That's Woman Squilla. Aye. That's Woman Thomas. Aye. That's President Clark. Aye. The ayes are 17 and nays are zero. Which are right all members present having voted in affirmative the bill passes. Mr. Becker, please read the title of 200305. An ordinance amending various sections of the Philadelphia Code 
to address matters related to the landlord and tenant relationship during the novel coronavirus of 2019 pandemic and otherwise, including providing for payment agreements for tenants with a certified financial hardship related to COVID-19. This bill having been read on two different days, the question now, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the rule. Councilwoman Bass. Aye. Councilwoman Brooks. Aye. Councilman Dom. Aye. Councilwoman Gauthier. Aye. <coughs> Councilwoman Gilmore Richardson is voting aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilwoman Jim. Aye. Councilman Heenan. Aye. Councilman Johnson. Councilman Johnson. Aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman O. Aye. Councilman O'Neill. Aye. Councilwoman Parker. Aye. Councilwoman Kenina Sanchez. Aye. Councilman Squilla. Aye. Councilman Thomas. Aye. Council President Clark. All right, the ayes are 17 and nays are zero. Majority of all members present, voting in affirmative, the bill passes. Mr. Decker, you have any additional resolutions? There are no, no resolutions on the final passage calendar. Resolutions. Thank you very much. That completes our calendar for today. Um, prior to recognizing members regarding species, I will note for the record at this time that we will use the chat feature available on Microsoft's team to allow members to signify that they wish to be recognized in order to comply with the Sunshine Act. The chat feature must only be used for this particular feature. With that said, are there any speeches on behalf of the minority? And I believe she recognizes Councilwoman Brooks. Thank you so much, Council President. Um, as, as the COVID-19 pandemic and its economic impact progressed, more of our neighbors than ever have been at risk of eviction. Black and brown communities hit the hardest. Our constituents cannot recover from the traumatic events of the past few months and the uncertainty of the months ahead without stable housing. Today, City Council stepped up to the plate and passed bills that provided needed security for our community members that have been hit the hardest by this public health crisis. While measures like waiving late rental fees uh, may seem small, they can decide whether a family is able to put on the street or not. As someone who has faced housing insecurity firsthand, I know that these protections will have enormous impact on Philadelphia families. When families have homes to stay in, a whole city can, can be safer and healthier. I want to thank my colleagues, Councilmember Gim and Gautier, for working tirelessly on this package of bills with me. Um, I also want to thank the co-sponsors of Bill uh, 200302, Councilmembers Thomas, Johnson, Gilmore Richardson, and Keona Sanchez, for all of the, and all the community members who contributed to this legislation. I also want to thank all the Bill co-sponsors who pushed this legislation forward. This process was a learning experience for me and my team. And I'm very proud of what, I'm sorry. I'm proud that this is my first piece of legislation to pass. Thank you so much, Council President. Thank you, Councilwoman, and congratulations. Thank you. Lee, and renters were considered cost burdened, which means they spend at least a third of their income on rent each month. Hundreds of thousands of Philadelphians have filed for unemployment since mid-March. And we know that job losses are concentrated in the low end of wage distribution among workers who are more likely to be Black and Latino and who are more likely to rent their homes. 
The city's emergency rental assistance program was oversubscribed by 400% in five days. We know that help is coming from the state, but it hasn't arrived yet. In this moment when relief is uncertain, people need and deserve time to recover with grace and compassion. This legislation provides that time, and without it, we would have no other options. In Philadelphia, we know that up to 2,000 people already um, are subject to judgments, uh, are at risk for eviction following the end of the governor's stay-at-home order. And approximately 1,800 eviction cases are waiting to receive hearings. Because we took action today, we'll be able to prevent these evictions in the midst of this pandemic. Likewise, these bills ensure that our courts will not be flooded with additional eviction cases once the statewide eviction moratorium is lifted. We've already seen this happen around the country, like in Milwaukee, where following the end of their moratorium, eviction filings jumped 42% compared to last year. Colleagues, um, thank you so much for your support today. With the Emergency Housing Protection Act, we have an um, enormous opportunity to protect our city's renters and ensure they can remain safe and healthy at home. And we have the opportunity to lead the nation in these efforts, much like we did with the mortgage foreclosure diversion program during the Great Recession. Housing is a human right. And today we are taking bold action to ensure that this right is upheld for every Philadelphian. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Councilwoman, and congratulations. Thank you. Chair recognize Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President and colleagues. Uh, congratulations to all of the uh, authors and co-sponsors of the, the bills today. Um, it is a piece of work that we produce today. And I guess in an emergency, you don't know and don't recognize or take the time to catch your breath to look at the contribution you're, you're, you're making. But what was done today was seismic, seismic. Uh, and it uh, created that sea change in the right direction. But I want to also point out, uh, because uh, tomorrow uh, is the celebration of Juneteenth. And there are a lot of parallels and correlations between what we're going through right now and what our ancestors went through, uh, not, not to the degree that they went through it, but similarities. And, and one of them I want to point out, that what you're seeing on the streets of Philadelphia is not all black people. It's a coalition of black, white, Latino, Asian that are out there on the front line pushing all of us uh, to make more of a commitment and contribution. Without abolitionists, would there have been a Juneteenth? Um, I want to, I've gotten calls from reporters about my background and my black cowboy statue, but I want you to see the rest of the wall. That's Harriet Tubman. Um, next to that is the door of no return. That is the last door that slaves entering slave ships saw on the way to uh, the institution of slavery. Above that is a, a picture that I put up there because it, it talks about the contribution of the church and how the church played a part in our freedom. Uh, next to it is a small rendition of the slave ships we went over on, and here we are today. Most importantly, though, Harriet Tubman said, I freed a thousand slaves. I'd have, I'd have freed a thousand more had they but known they were slaves. Uh, and 155 years ago, uh, Juneteenth is known as the Freedom Day, and we are now recognizing that, and I want to thank uh, Jim Kenney, our mayor, for, for the first time in the history of this city, we are actually acknowledging that fact. Um, it's important that we put in context what's happening now and what happened then and the coalitions that were formed then and the coalitions that are formed now. Um, sometimes freedom is messy. It is loud. It is contentious. It is abrasive. Sometimes it has to be. And so I'm going to give a shout out uh, to, uh, to all those who, who moved this body and moved the city in the right direction. I want to particularly 
acknowledge uh, the freshmen, uh, Brooks, Isaiah, Kathy, uh, Gaudier, um, and with the mentorship of, of Gim. But I also want to counterbalance that with the leadership of Daryl Clark, of Parker, of um, definitely Sanchez, who had to be the go-between, because none of this would have happened without all of those components playing together. Because you can be too far right, you can be too far left, but in this body, you have to work together to get nine votes. And that is not dictatorial, it is compromise and give and take. And I'm proud of what we did, Mr. President. So um, I'm going to give you the title of Frederick Douglass of our council who uh, helped us through all of this uh, to the wee hours of the morning um, and bringing us all back to the table when we all just wanted to throw our hands up and lean. So thank you very much. Uh, all of us recognize June 19th and, and look at it in context of today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Councilman, well-spoken. Um, we all must continue to be focused and unified and know why we're here um, to look forward to uh, having this awesome opportunity to do good work for the people and the citizens of the city of Philadelphia. Chair recognizes Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. I want to echo the words of my colleague, Councilmember Jones, and thank uh, the sponsors of the legislation uh, that was passed today. Uh, it was very important legislation. There were a lot of conversations and discussions regarding this legislation, and I want to congratulate them on the legislation getting passed. Uh, I'd also want to echo the comments that um, my colleague made uh, in reference to Juneteenth and thank uh, our mayor for making tomorrow a city holiday. And I want to thank the thousands of people that rallied and sent emails and reached out to us on social media regarding uh, this budget. I think today's first step in getting the budget done reflects those calls for change. But I also want to go back to the question that I asked uh, a few weeks ago. Are you committed to making lasting change by making an investment in the African-American community? And when Councilmember Jones talked about Juneteenth, um, it really had me to reflect on some things that I didn't think I was going to share. But you know, Juneteenth, and he gave a little background, as we all know that it was the reason why Juneteenth was so important, because 30 months later, after the Emancipation Proclamation became law, slaves in Galveston, Texas, Texas were still enslaved 30 months later after the Emancipation Proclamation. And when I think about Juneteenth, which is going to be celebrated tomorrow, I have to think of my great-great-grandfather, Amos Green. And the only record or information I have of my great-grandfather is this document that I have right here. This is a will that was signed in 1843 from Richard Reynolds to Richard Green. So when I think about my last name, my last name comes from someone that owned my great-great-grandfather. And so that was in 1843. So when I think about Juneteenth, I have to think about the legacy of my family and my great-great-grandfather. And also tomorrow was going to be the original date of a so-called Make America Great rally in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so the fact that tomorrow, which is Juneteenth, and also you're going to have this rally in Tulsa. Uh, I, along with so many people around this country, were outraged because I have to think about my great-grandfather. The only record I have of him is a, a will uh, showing him as a slave. And in fact, it occurred in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so many people now are familiar with the Tulsa uh, massacre and outraged that uh, this rally, alleged Make America Great rally, was going to be held in Tulsa. But Tulsa was not an isolated incident. Just like Eric Gardner, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Armand Arbery, Amadou Diallo, and so many others were not isolated incidents. Colfax, Louisiana, 1873, similar massacre to Tulsa, Oklahoma, 62 to 153 African Americans were killed and massacred. Elaine, Arkansas, 1919, 100 to 237 African Americans massacred. Rosewood, Florida, and some of us may have seen the movie Rosewood. 27 to 150 African Americans also massacred and killed. Wilmington, North Carolina, 60 to 300 African Americans were killed and massacred. 
1898. Wilmington, North Carolina is also the only coup d'etat that has occurred on U.S. soil. We had African-American political leaders and white leaders who had duly elected were violently removed from office and massacred and others were told to leave that land. The only time in the history of this nation. And so for me, North Carolina is very important. Many of you have heard the story about my grandfather and how you know, he was able to purchase land in North Carolina. For many of us that live in Philadelphia, we have North Carolina roots. And you know, my grandfather was able to purchase our family farm in 1943. So I showed you the will, which showed my lineage, but also this is the deed that my grandfather was able to purchase in 1943 from white allies across Highway 118. And so what I've not talked about, and I've talked about how he was able to bring other African-American farmers together and be able to help provide transportation and education for African-Americans in aid in North Carolina. Also, after he purchased that farm, a group of white men came to my grandfather's house with guns and said, listen, we're gonna remove you from this land. My grandfather, based on family history, got his shotgun and was able to stop a standoff. However, they could have gone and come back and aid in North Carolina would be added to all those cities that I just talked about, like Wilmington, North Carolina, like Colfax, Louisiana, like Elaine, Arkansas, Rosewood, Florida, and Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so if that had occurred, I would not be making this speech right now today. And so when we look at the history of Juneteenth and we look at Tulsa, and when I asked a question that I asked a few weeks ago, are you committed to making lasting change by making an investment in the African-American community? Tomorrow is a reminder of why that is so important. And so that's why we need to be reminded about these reasons why this question needs to be asked and why we need to continue to make sure people are committed to making that investment. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you so much. Very impressive. I believe that concludes these speeches on behalf of the minority and majority. Councilman Jones just got a text that somebody sent me a picture of Frederick Douglass. Um, in reference to uh, <laughs> your earlier statement. Um, with that, Chair now recognizes Councilman Jones for a motion to adjourn. Did he? Thank you, Mr. I, President. I, I don't know if you're over there, Councilman. I make sure you're still intact. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to you because I'm looking through my papers. Go ahead. Councilman Swillow? No, we're we're gonna adjourn. Yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Councilman Jones. Um recognize uh, Councilman Jones for a motion to adjourn, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that council stand adjourned until Thursday, I'm gonna say June 25th. Yes. 10 a.m. Thank uh, you. 2020. Second. Thank you. And with that, uh, Council, is that Councilman Johnson? I just want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers this week and enjoy yourselves. That's Thank all. You. Thank, Thank you, Council, Council President. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, thank you so much for that. Looking forward to it. Um, so with that, um, it's been more than probably second that this particular council session, which was uh, extremely significant, as will next week be, uh, is adjourned until Thursday, June 25th, 2020 at 10 a.m. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. Motion carry. Thank you all so much for continuing to stay focused and unified. Really appreciate and love you guys. Have a good, safe weekend. Great job, Council President. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Brian.